Hey, I'm Philip Cameron, and I'm so glad you could join me today for Daily Faith. On today's program, I'm going to show you how to get your prayers answered. If you've been asking God for something, a miracle in your life, I'm going to give you a key to unlocking the door through expectation. We've got some great news to share with you about our mission work in Moldova, and I am so thrilled that you take the time to spend 30 minutes with myself and my daughter Melody. I'm glad you're here, and this is Daily Faith. Oh, I'm so glad you're with me today. And joining me, of course, is my daughter, Melody. Now, just to let you know, I do have a wife. You do have a mom, don't you, Mel? Yes, certainly. And she is in Montgomery, where we live. And she's not a TV kind of person, to be quite honest with you. But she spends most of her time working, building um, packages and gifts and clothes for the orphans that we support in Eastern Europe. So it, after she, she babysits all day, Mm -hmm. And then at night time, she goes out looking for bargains to, to buy for the kids. That's and, right. And um, she's got a great big craft from upstairs in her house. And she, she has to shop for 40 people at Christmas time, at least. At least 40. Outside of her own family, yes. So it's, it's a task. It's a nonstop. Uh, yeah. I'm, so she's not with us. The, the, the next best <laughs> thing is my daughter, Melody. I hope you can stay with us today. I've got some exciting news from a mission work in Moldova. And also I've got a word from the Lord for you because God has been helping me see how to unlock the door of... And have you ever prayed and prayed and prayed and it seems like your, your prayers are bouncing off the ceiling? Well, i got news for you. God is going to do something in your life if you listen to what the Word of the Lord says and apply it in your life. I believe that God is going to do something. I want to sing for you a song that is going to set this whole thing up. And it's... It, Today's theme is the power of expectation. What are you believing God for? What is it in your life that if I could sit down with you in your house and say to you, what do you need God to do for you? What is the first thing that will come out of your spirit? What is the need you have most? Is it a healing in your body or sickness in your family? Is it a family member that's unsaved? But I'm going to tell you something. God is more willing to meet our needs than we are to receive it. It's, 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 not, it's not that you've got a father in heaven that's res resisting and saying, oh, I'm not going to give this. It's his pleasure, the Bible says. It's, his, it's the father's pleasure to, to, to bless you. Well, how come we, we spend a lot of time asking and not receiving? And I want to tell you something. Listen to this. Got any rivers you think are uncrossable? This is a word for you today. Got any mountains you can't tunnel through God specializes in things thought impossible that's the secret and he can do what none other can do come on sing it with me you know the song don't you God any river you think are uncrossable. Got any boundaries you can't tunnel through? Got any mountains you can't tunnel through? God specializes in things thought impossible. And He can do what another, another can do. And He can do what none other can do. The woman in the Bible with the issue of blood was in a real bind. She was hemorrhaging, which made her unclean. She was isolated from her community because the sickness that she had literally locked her in. Because in those days, if a woman had an issue of blood, whether it was a monthly issue or a permanent issue that this woman had, 
you had to go back to the priest and be cleansed and, and be given a, a clearance so you, you can go back into public life. This woman was stuck in a horrendous situation. She had spent all that she had, so she was poor. She was dying slowly, bleeding to death. But someone, the Bible says, she heard about Jesus. Someone came into her life with enough faith to lift her expectation up out of despair. And the Bible says that she thought a thought, which to me is incredible. She said, if I could just touch his garment, I would be made whole. Now listen to this. That woman was about to set a precedent that would change how people were healed from that moment onwards. You know the story. There were so many people and she, she literally crawled and she touched his garment. And the moment she touched him, Jesus said, who touched me? Who was it? that? Because I felt virtue, life leave my body. And she stood up and she knew she'd been healed. Let me tell you something. When Jesus touches your situation, you're going to know it. But the Bible says, and this is the important part, her being healed, her expectation brought healing from Jesus. But the real exciting thing of that moment was that if you read in subsequent scriptures, the Bible says that whenever Jesus went to a town or a village, they brought the sick out so that they might touch the hem of his garment as he walked past and they were going to be healed. That woman unknowingly through her expectation set an entire new paradigm for people to come in contact with the healing power of Jesus. And folk were so filled with expectation because of her faith that they said, listen, I'm going to bring my sick son, my sick daughter, whatever it is. I'm going to bring them out and I'm going to lay them so that they can reach out and just touch the hem of his garment. And they're going to be healed. I pray for you today. Oh, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That your expectation will impact all of your family. That your faith, that you're believing in God today will look past your circumstance, look past the insulation and the isolation that you've been facing and that you can say, God, I'm not just believing God for me. I'm believing God for other people, even kids that aren't even born. I pray, I was talking to my daughter Melody this morning about things that will happen when I'm long gone because I'm not just, not just interested in me. I'm interested in my generation. I'm interested in those that God has given to me. And I want to pray with you today that God is going to give you the answers to your prayers. And there's a key verse in Mark. It says this, verse 11, chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it. So you believe that you're receiving it even as you ask for it. It's not a wishing game. This is not when you wish upon a star. This is you saying to God, listen, I'm expecting this to happen. So prayer with expectation has much more impact than prayer and a wish. If you're believing God for something in your life today, I want you to write it down somewhere and say, this is what I'm asking God to do. But there's another key that I think is almost, if not more important. Listen to this. It says, and whenever you, and whenever you stand to pray, forgive the key of receiving answers to prayer is you can't receive prayer being answered if you get something against someone else unforgiveness is the biggest stumbling block of God hearing your prayers that's what he says this is Jesus words now this is Jesus talking listen and whenever you stand praying forgive and if you have anything against you, anyone, so that your Father, will also, who also is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. So there's healing when you forgive those that have hurt you. There's restoration when you forgive those that have taken from you. It, 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 you see, the answer to your prayer isn't the big deal to God. It's the fixing of your heart that's the big deal to God. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill. He knows everything. He's got everything that you need already in his hands. But as a father looks after his kids and raises his kids, and I've raised Melody pretty good, I think, 
But there were times when she must not have thought too much of me because I was, you know, I wasn't sometimes being the happiest dad in the world. But I was looking at a complete woman, not just a little girl I was dealing with at the time. So I encourage you today, in your prayer life, why don't you forgive those that have done something? If you're right and your heart's wrong, you're still wrong. It's your attitude towards others and your attitude towards God that opens his hand. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my dear friend watching. May have turned on for a few moments and what they've received today is an answer to their prayer that God is going to do something because they're expecting it to happen. But Lord, most of all, work in my heart to, to activate forgiveness towards those that have done something against me. And when that two things come together, Lord, I'm expecting a miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. You really need to get that book. Our family, every man for over 200 years were alcoholics. And uh, my uncle Michael, my dad's oldest brother, prayed for seven years to get our family saved. And two young boys out of a Bible school in England their first crusade, they didn't have anywhere to go and they stayed in a, they preached in this guy's bedroom in his house. And they had 96 converts in six weeks. 67 of them were Camerons. And this is the story, I promise you, this book will change how you see the possibility of your family getting saved. So get it, I, I really am excited. Melody, you understand the power of household salvation. I sure do. Yep. And you were talking um, earlier about forgiveness. And um, I can't help but think, um, is Jesus hung on a cross? Yeah. The last word he spoke. Other than it is finished. The last thing he said was, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And if, if everything that we, is he took all our sin and all of the things that he knew that we would do, um, he could hang giving his life on a cross. We have no excuse to say that we no. can't forgive. Others. If he can, if he can for, uh, instead of calling 10,000 angels, yeah. if he could forgive on the cross, you that's can right. forgive in your life too. And um, okay. well, that's a great thought. I'm, I'm, I'm going to preach that. Thank you. Remind <laughs> me will you, when we, well, that's like, wow. She says more in two minutes or two, 20 seconds than I do in 10 minutes. I want you to watch this. This is a miracle testimony. We are reaching young folk in the country of Moldova and in Ukraine, young folk, when they're 16 from the orphanage, are put on the street, and they're lost. Traffickers come and get them, and use them 30 to 50 times a day. And our ministry has homes in Moldova, and uh, they, we take them into the, the home, and, and instead of putting them on the street, we put them in school, and they finish their education. Two of our kids right now are studying to be doctors. Isn't that amazing? from being told every day in the, in the orphanage, you're nothing, you're garbage, your mother didn't want you, your father doesn't want you. These young men and women stand up and are counted for God. And uh, this is a miracle testimony of one of our lovely girls. Watch this. My name is Angela. I spent 11 years in the orphanage because my family did not have a job and we had nowhere to live. My grandmother decided to take us and we live with her. 
In her two rooms apartment, we lived ten people. The apartment had no heating and no water. One day, my family decided to put me in the orphanage because they could, couldn't take care of me. The teachers was really bad with me and with another kids. When I turned 16, I had to leave the orphanage. We, I didn't know where to go and what to do because nobody want, wanted to help me. But one day I heard about an amazing family, the Cameroons, who built and gave hope for kids like me. I went to meet them. After that, my life has changed completely. The opportunity that they gave me gave me a spark of hope for my future. The orphan's hands, it's not just a spark of hope for me, but for all the hopeless out there. I was full of fears, but now I am free. That absolutely incredible. Angela is a, a miracle. She spent 10 years in the orphanage, and I, I can't even begin to express to you the soul-destroying daily grind of an orphanage. We've had a lot of talk about concentration camps. Let me tell you something. You go to one of these orphanages, and you'll know what that feels like. And Angela has a gentle heart. In fact, I'm so proud of her. She's just learning English, and for her to do that was a, yeah. a great challenge for her. And that girl, listen to this, she has just graduated. And we have a home up in Odessa in the Ukraine. Odessa is, is literally under the breath of the Russian takeover. They're, they're always under threat because they're on the coast. And if the Russians want to take over Ukraine, that is where they'll start. We have a home. In fact, we've just leased. We were in one house, and I, I was over there just a couple of months ago. And an opportunity came up while I was there, one of those decisions you've got to make on the run. And we were able to get a house that is twice as big as the house we've had for the last year or so, a couple of years. And uh, we've, we've expanded into this home, which allows us to take twice as much girls as we had before. And Angela is going to move from Moldova to the Ukraine so she can take our DNA, what we, what we want to put into kids. And that lovely girl is going up to Odessa to share the gospel with new kids from Odessa and Ukraine that are coming in. They all speak Russian. She's a Moldovan girl that speaks Romanian and Russian. And all the Ukrainians speak Ukrainian and Russian. So she'll go up there and she will live amongst these new kids coming out of the orphanage. And by doing so, share the gospel. And back, going back again to forgiveness, the things that these girls have experienced in their life is heartbreaking. All of them have incredible stories, but they've been able to forgive their families, yeah. the teachers in the orphanage. Um, one of them, one of the girls always wanted to go back and visit her mom. And we, you know, knowing what she went through, through her life um, because of her mom, we said, are you sure it's a good idea? I don't really know if you should go and visit your mom. I, she never did anything for you. No. She doesn't love you. She, you know, she didn't take very good care of you. Um, and without thinking, said, if I don't go back to my mom, how are they, they going to know about, how will she know about Jesus? And not only in forgiving their family and forgiving all the things that they've been through, instead of carrying that baggage that they've lived for years, their hands are now free to go back and, and love those that have hurt them. And if they can do it. We can do it. We can do it. And I yeah. can't tell you, one, this girl that Melly's talking about, I was so angry one day talking to her. Just yeah. frustration. Tried to kill herself. Yeah. No, I mean, just lost. And I said, I could, I, I could, ooh, I could kill your mom for what she's put you through. And she yeah. looked at me, she says, Dad, how will I ever tell her about Jesus if I don't forgive her? Yeah. And that's after years, most of our life spent being brutalized by the system. Abandonment. If you, if you could live, if you could come with us 
and watch these gentle hearts that have been so crushed and so bruised by life. And then the hope of the gospel. It never fails to amaze us. We're sitting here crying about it. <laughs> and we've been doing this for 30 years. It is a miracle to see what God can do. And the wonderful thing is that you can play a part with us. We need miracles every day to keep this ministry going in Moldova. Gasoline is almost $6 a gallon. Gas for cooking is almost twice what it is here in America. Everything is more expensive. We've just had a tremendous victory. We've purchased a village of houses, six houses called Vatra Village. And it will allow us to take in 90 more kids. But I, we can't even begin to take in 90 more kids until we have people standing up with us to say, well, we can care for it. Each of our houses will take 120 people giving a dollar a day to support it. That puts a family in, that provides the food, that provides the transportation. Our, our kids go by bus to all the colleges and universities that they go to. We literally, uh, these kids aren't, we're, this is not a bowl of rice once a day. This is, uh, this is family in your house, 20, doctors, dentists, braces, everything that you can think of, we provide for these kids. Because I've learned this, these aren't just orphans. The Bible says that he is the father of the fatherless. And when I care for an orphan, I am literally caring for the children of God. And I know watching me just now, you can be, thinking, well, I can, a dollar a day, what, can, what, what does that do? It will help me help kids like Angela and the other dozens and dozens of kids that are in our care as we speak and the hundreds that have gone through us and out now living. In fact, this year has been a year of babies. All the girls we originally had are getting married and having kids. So I'm, I'm a granddad <laughs> in multiple continents all over the world. I'm asking you right now, will you pray about being partner with us to help us help kids like Angela. Vatra Village is a tremendous opportunity. 120 people watching me just now, giving a dollar a day. A dollar a day is less than a can of Coke. But a dollar a day put together with 120 other people, 119 other people allows me to open up one of the houses of Vatra. There's a number on your screen, really easy to, it's 1833 Daily Faith. If you, if, you, if you spell out Daily Faith, that's the number. We'll have the actual physical number up on the screen as well. I want you to call that number and say, I've been watching Philip and Melody on Daily Faith and I wanna help sponsor one of the houses at Vatra Village. I wanna help young girls that literally are, are a, 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 a breath away from being trafficked by traffickers and used 30 to 50 times a day. And your gift, your gift will change that. We have the houses finished. Right now we're working on a container to ship the furniture over there. And as soon as that's done, we can open up the houses of Vatra and take young women and young men in and say to them, your destiny is not standing on a street corner somewhere being sold 30 to 50 times a day. You're worth more than that. And we want to give you the opportunity to come. If it were your daughter, if it were your granddaughter, wouldn't you want someone to help them? Well, that's why we're here. And I just pray, Father, in Jesus' name, watching me just now, there are people that can give large amounts, that can help us with the container, which is $10,000, with the finishing of some of the houses, which is $45,000. But everybody, Lord, today watching, could give a dollar a day to help us open the houses of Vatra Village. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that those watching will obey your voice right now, in Jesus' name. Go to your phone, one eight three three daily faith When the prayer partner picks up the phone, just say, I've been listening to Philip, I want to help. I'll give a dollar a day. And I mean this, it's never, ever going to be given in more fertile soil. Because these kids, they come to us as orphans. And they are changed from orphans into sons and daughters. 
And then as sons and daughters, they become missionaries. And they now do the mission work. As we're speaking, they're having camps with hundreds of kids that have never heard the gospel, run by kids that were once orphans, driven bus, buses driven by kids that were once orphans. The whole thing put together by kids who were once orphaned, who were despised by everybody, but are precious in his sight. So I pray that you'll go to your phone. Maldi, how important is someone going to a phone to connect with these kids? It's, it's life-giving. I mean, it's, it's not, you're providing a home, a bed, a place for them to come to learn, to, be, to as you said, to become a son and daughter, and then go out and change, change others who were in the exact same situation as them. So it's. I know the Lord's talking to your heart. We are waiting to hear from you, and I pray that God will bless you in Jesus' name. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova, from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833 Daily Faith. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833-DAILY-FAITH. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention, Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124.